Hello everyone. I'm glad you're here. I hope you have your Bibles with you. You know, I've said it before. If if you don't bring your Bible with you and read it, it's not the same as just listening to, to me teach. You, you have to read it for yourself, the Word of God. I put this lesson together, the Spirit of Hope, the God of Hope, from beginning to end. The title of the lesson is The Sun Goes Away. And what I've done, I'm using an analogy. And the church, the bride of Christ, is waiting on Jesus' return. And a family, they have a son. And he goes away for a long period of time. And... He doesn't know when he's going to return. He's going on a mission trip or a, uh, a job, just whatever it is that you can relate to. And this is the idea of this analogy is so uh, a non-believer or a new convert can relate to the relationship that the church has with Jesus and his return. So if you will, turn with me to John 16, 22, and you can stop this lesson anytime you get ready. I've got the, all the scriptures listed here so that you can uh, pause the video and uh, turn to the scripture. John 16, 22, and this is Jesus speaking. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again in your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. This is a promise. I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice. Now therefore ye have sorrow. He's gone away, but, but I will see you again. This is what Jesus says. He will see us again. He'll come for his church. His family, they sorrow, but there'll be joy at the son's return. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. We're waiting on a living Savior, Jesus Christ, God the Father, raised him from the dead. Amen. And to wait for his son from heaven. We're to wait. We're to watch for him in the same way that the family will wait on the son to return. We're to wait. It's going to be a joyous occasion when he returns. 1 Thessalonians 4.18 Wherefore comfort one another with these words. This is the word of God and this is what we all comfort each other with. Knowing and having the hope in his return looking for his return and that is a hope and the son he sends his family letters and it comforts them with his words first john 3 3 there's a purification while we wait and we watch for the Lord's return. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Every man that hath this hope, this hope in his return, the coming of our Savior and his return. Let me read on verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, 
but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. We'll see him in the person and we'll be like him. And one of these days, one of these days they're going, the sun will be with them again. And there's a purification process when we have this hope. We should be looking for the imminent return of Jesus every day. There's purification and sanctification in it. And there's people that are teaching that, that it's unhealthy. But that's not true. We have to go through a sanctification process in order to uh, deal with the tribulations that come into our lives. And we should be looking for him. There is a purification and sanctification of the believer. Looking for him every day. Looking for his, when he shall appear, we shall uh, see him as he is. That is our hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. And in the same way, there's purification in the saints, the family, the wife or the mother who's ever expecting his return. They've run the vacuum cleaners and they've dusted and they've made the beds and everything's clean and pure and they want everything to be just right at the son's return. And that's the way we need to be. We need to uh, be found spotless and serving him. We are to be of the day and not of the night. Amen. Romans 12, 12. It's blessed my heart to do this lesson. Romans 12, 12. When I say there's people teaching that it's unhealthy, let's read verse 11. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord every day, looking for his return, purif purification and sanctification in the believer not slothful in business. We will go about our business. They say when we look for the Lord and his imminent return, they say it's unhealthy. The Bible, that's not what the Bible says. That's why we need to read our Bibles. Not slothful in business. We have long-term vision. And through our sanctification, we're ready for tribulation whenever Jesus comes and we're to look for him every day verse 12 rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation continuing instant in prayer amen this family they're praying for the son's return and they'll, they're rejoicing in that hope for when he does when he does come home Looking for him every day. Not giving up. Patient in tribulation and continuing instant in prayer. Titus 2.13 looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Looking for that blessed hope and his glorious appearing. Amen. That blessed hope. The family. 
looking for their son's return. Anybody that ever loved anybody on this earth knows what that means. Looking for for a son's return. Having that blessed hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. Philippians 4, 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. He is with us now, right now. We're looking for his return in person, the day of our redemption, where we'll be like him, looking for his glorious appearing. Let our your moderation be known unto all men. That is a gentle and mild patience, going about our daily business and looking for his return while we're sanctified in him, in our walk in Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The family waits patiently on the son. They receive word that he's, he's, coming, he's coming home one of these days and they're gentle and mild in their patience. John 14, 1 through 4. John 14, 1 through 4. This is the promise of Jesus before he went away. Just like the son. We'll read that in a minute. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also, and where I go ye know, and the way you know. I will come again and receive you unto myself. Let your let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, the Father, believe in me, the Son. The Son says that he will come again. And this is what the Son said to his family in John 16, 22. We'll roll back over there just for a good reminder. And Jesus said, And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Amen. That's blessed assurance, our hope in Jesus Christ. He's with us now, and he's coming for his church. Amen. Just like this son is coming home to his family. What a day of rejoicing that will be. We're going to close out with Romans 15. Romans 15, verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. The God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing, believing in him and his return, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. In verse 33. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen.